Here we are on a boat, a Cruiser 420, that we just did an inverter install, and I'm here to talk about emphasizing the importance of where to actually get power, or where to connect the cables to an inverter charger on a battery bank. Uh, in the manual, they're always going to show you a diagram, and they're going to show that the cable's directly connected to a battery. A lot of people think that, and they take that as an abstraction, as a general recommendation, and they might start getting creative, because the inverter might be far away or closer to the battery switches or even closer to the DC distribution. And in this specific instance, an unknown or um, to an installer that didn't really understand the implications of what was required might be tempted to actually have the inverter directly connected to the DC distribution. Thinking, oh, well, it's right there, it's convenient, it's shorter cable run, why wouldn't I do that? And what they might be doing is they might be installing it on the switch side. So the house goes to a fuse, the fuse goes to a switch, the switch goes to the DC distribution. And then from there, they would install their inverter connected to a switch DC distribution. The problem with that is that inverters now are not, for a lot of them, are actually not just inverters. They're actually inverter chargers. And so this specific advice is, is specific to inverter charger installations. With any charging circuit, it's absolutely essential that the charging circuit is connected directly at the battery. So that would be battery chargers, solar, it could be alternators ideally, uh, wind generators, uh, methanol fuel cell, whatever charging circuit you have should always never be unswitched. And the reason is, if you ever switch off a battery and disconnect it from a charging circuit, and potential loads are connected at that same point, so a battery charger and a load are connected at the same point and are suddenly disconnected from a battery, what's gonna happen is the battery chargers might act as what's called a power supply. And a power supply and a battery charger are essentially very different. A power supply is actually gonna be able to hold steady a voltage at let's say 13.3 volts on a 12 volt system and hold it steady regardless as loads are added or removed. What's interesting is a battery charger has a longer react time. It actually needs to be connected to the battery. So loads are connected to the battery and the charger is connected to the battery. And as the loads are added or removed, the battery acts as a spring. It's able to take shock loads, right? And suddenly a large load is removed. Well then, if the charger was directly connected to the load, as you would remove a large load, suddenly the voltage would spike. And that's the problem with using a battery charger as a power supply. Some are built that way, you need to make sure, especially with an inverter charger, they're battery chargers, not power supply. So you always have to make sure that the battery charger is directly connected to the battery. And that's why your inverter charger, the charger function needs to be connected directly at the battery. And so don't be tempted in installing the, bat the inverter charger at a switch DC distribution, but install it directly at the battery via what we talked about, a DC master disconnect switch, an inverter fuse, proper size cable, back to the inverter charger.